Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial. So this is going to be geared toward crocheters learning how to knit. And we're going to go over continental knitting and Norwegian purling, which for me are the most natural feeling um, methods to knit as a crocheter, as well as learning a little bit about the anatomy of a knit stitch and a purl stitch and how to read your knitting. So today, we are going to go over all of those things in kind of a talking method. So I'm just going to go through and show you visually how to do everything, but also talk about common um, themes between knitting and crochet. So the things you'll need are your yarn and your needle. And I'm going to be casting on here in the long tail cast on method. What I did in the tutorial previous to this, if you missed it, I will link it in the I card above. Uh, this is my favorite method to cast on. And just like when you're chaining your first uh, row of crochet, if you're doing a foundation single crochet or double crochet, or you're doing a chain stitch, you want to make sure that you're counting and keeping track. And for knitting, when you're casting onto your needle, you always want to make sure to count that first loop. So here we'll have 12 loops to work through and this will give you a visual on what a row of knitting looks like and also be a quick um, move through the row. So here's my tail and here's the end that goes to the ball and we want to keep track of that because we don't want to start knitting with our tails just like we don't crochet with our tails. Um, so you can see this cast on gives you a nice bottom edge to your piece. So when we're ready we're going to turn our work around and we're going to start by holding our needle. So the way I hold my needle is much like I would hold a crochet piece. I use my hand to support the needle just like I would to support crochet work and I use my right hand um, to crochet or just like I would to crochet. Uh, I would tension the yarn in my left hand over my first finger and through my other fingers just like I do with crochet and then I insert my needle much like I do my hook. So I'm using the same sort of motion as I would when I'm crocheting. So when you yarn over to do stitches in crochet, you're bringing your um, hook underneath your yarn and putting the yarn over the top. So swoop, swoop, swoop. But the motion for knitting continental style is opposite. So you're not going to be putting your needle through and then hooking your yarn over it like crochet you're actually going to be putting your needle over the top of your yarn and it's a picking motion more than a scooping motion so you're going to be inserting your needle through the front leg uh, which is the right leg of your stitch and it's on the front part of your knitting needle and you insert it from front to back so here is the front and you're inserting to the back and then you'll be taking your yarn and you're going to put your needle over the top of your yarn and you're going to use a picking motion to pick it through to the front side of your work. So here I'll show again, insert yarn under your needle and pick it through and that is a continental knit stitch and you can see here I'm using my finger to hold on to that stitch and keep it from flying off the top of the needle because without a hook there's not much there to stop that from happening. So here's my stitch. I'm inserting through the front leg from front to back, putting my needle over the top of the yarn and picking it through. And that's it. That is the simplest um, stitch you do in knitting is the knit stitch. Um, again here I'm showing you the tension is exactly the same as crochet and I always think of it as I'm just holding my piece in my left hand just like I would when I'm crocheting. So I use my fingers here uh, to control the yarn so it's not going to fall off the tips of my needle. So on both hands I'm using my fingers as a guard to keep my knitting on, on the sticks so to speak. So here I am inserting from front to back and scooping the yarn through. So pick and pick and here's the last stitch and pick. So you can see that a knit stitch looks a lot like a V. It looks a lot like a, the front of a crochet chain um, and that's what you'll be looking for if you're supposed to be doing a row of knit stitches. You want to see those V's under the um, knitting needle for the most part. So V, 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 there's your knit stitch. So when we turn it around, you can see what the back of a knit stitch looks like, and it looks like the front of a purl. So that's a purl bump. 
uh, what would be called a pearl bump, but it's the back of a knit stitch. A knit stitch on the back is a pearl, and a pearl on the back is a knit. It's just the side of the, the work that you're looking at. So here you can see I am holding my yarn in my left hand, holding my work in my left hand, and using my knitting needle to again insert into my work. So on the next row, you can see you're working over those bumps from the previous row, and you want to make sure to go above any bumps that are underneath your needle. So these bumps that run horizontally uh, and perpendicular, perp parallel to the needle, you'll want to work above it. If you work below it, you'll be working into the stitch of the row below. So you always want to work above it into the, the yarn that is live and active on your needles. Um, in knitting, you're working with live stitches. Everything is live and isn't bound off. So for me as a crocheter, I was always extremely nervous about dropping things or worrying that I'm not working into the right space but you're always working into the most recent row or the most active row, and that's the loops that are currently on your needle. Um, just like in crochet, you'd be working into the tops of your stitches and you just follow the directions into which stitches you will work on. Um, same thing in knitting. You're always working into that row that is sitting on your needle uh, unless the directions tell you otherwise. So you can see here all the Vs from this row because we just did knits. So for me as a crocheter, uh, one of the obstacles in for me to learn how to knit wasn't necessarily knitting itself. Once I learned that I could hold the yarn in my left hand while I'm knitting, um, it made doing this a bit easier. Um, I was able to see what I was doing. Um, and I definitely recommend that if you're a new knitter, and you were a crocheter before just to continue uh, practicing doing the knit stitch until you feel very comfortable. Um, there's no rush, there's no race to get to the end to see how much you can knit. It's just getting the feeling for using um, a pointed needle versus a hook. So purling in knitting is one of the biggest obstacles in my opinion for crocheters because you have to do something that doesn't feel natural so moving your yarn to the front and trying to swoop the yarn over is just something that's very frustrating for a lot of people and for me i can speak to myself that it personally was so a norwegian pearl allows you to keep your yarn at the back of your work and scoop the yarn up in a way that you're doing a purl stitch without moving your yarn so you can see i'm inserting behind my working yarn and through the stitch from back to front or from right to left, moving my needles up and around to scoop the yarn that's behind my needle and then pulling that yarn right through. So I'm gonna do this again really slowly. So inserting my needle from right to left, turning the tips, scooping the yarn, and then pulling it back through. And this is very similar to doing a crochet stitch because you're inserting into your work, picking up the yarn behind your needle, and then pulling it back through. So here we go, we're going behind the yarn, into the stitch, turn your needles up using your finger to help control, pick up your yarn, and then turn your needles to pull it through the stitch. So you're, I'm, I'm exaggerating the motion here, you can use a lot of motion, a little bit of motion, but the more you practice, the smoother that this stitch goes and the the less motion that you'll have to do to achieve it so here we're inserting and I'm going to show you sort of real time how quickly this can go for me um, I am doing it a bit slower and a little bit more exaggerated than I would if I was knitting normally only because I'm doing it in front of a camera in a very small space but you can see it moves along just about as fast as a knit stitch you're just inserting picking up and swooping it through your previous stitch. Or you're swooping it through the stitch that you just went into. And so you can see here the bumps on the back, which are the pearl bumps, and on the front it makes a knit, so it makes a V. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the basic premise behind knitting. You have those two stitches and you can create anything with those. So here I'm going to do a row of knit to finish off 
the quote-unquote stockinette pattern, which is knits on the front and pearls in the back, which creates that very familiar flat um, piece that's very, you know, open. So here I'm showing you that it creates the stockinette patterning, so to speak, or what is called stockinette stitch, which is knits on the front and pearls in the back. So here again, I'm going to start working pearls. So I use my finger to control the yarn. So if I'm going behind on that first stitch, just like I would if I was crocheting, I would use my finger as a tool to control where the yarn is supposed to be. So just because I don't have a hook on the end of this doesn't mean that I can't use my finger um, to help guide it. Then I'm going to turn my tips up and around, scooping the yarn, and then pulling that tip back to the, the front side of my work. So inserting from behind my working yarn and then from right to left into my stitch, using my fingers to control it by turning my wrist, I can flick the needles up and around to scoop the yarn. So inserting, swoop, and through my stitch and then moving the stitch you just worked off your needle. So swoop and up and around. And again, I'm exaggerating the motion. Behind, up, swoop, and around. You're going to be pulling it back through again. And you can see here that the stitches are nice and even and you're able to do things pretty quickly. So here, up, swoop, and around. In, swoop, and around. And after a while, becomes much more fluid and it feels much more natural um, as you go forward but with learning any new skill you know you want to take your time and you want to practice so you can practice doing knits on the front and pearls on the back and get a feel for how the yarn moves um, <clears throat> with your hands and how you can learn to control where your yarn is going so that you don't feel like the yarn is just going to fly off the needles just because there's no hook on the end so here we go, another row of pearls completed, and on the front you can see we're just continuing in stockinette. So what is really fun is when you start to combine knits and pearls together. So to do ribbing, here is a knit one, pearl one, knit, and then pearl, knit, and then pearl, knit, then pearl, Knit, pearl, knit, pearl, and knit, and pearl. And then you can see here on this same row, you can see the differences between knits and pearls. So knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl. And you can see the bumps from the pearls and the V's for the knits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave some comments or questions down below. If you have them, share the video if you found it helpful. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!